Welcome back to the Ben uh, Breakfast uh, Show. Well, I hope you're enjoying uh, the uh, morning show this morning, and it's a lovely sunny day, sunny day as usual here in London. I don't know where you are. Well, it's now time to take on um, our guest, uh, Ibiyami Alabi. Did I pronounce that correctly? Absolutely. You know, I've been practicing to pronounce Nigerian <laughs> names, but I think I'm doing well. I think the ones I struggle with are the ones that have 25 letters where I have to, st you know, mention them in brackets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, uh, thank you so much for uh, coming to the studio. And uh, you're here this morning to talk about uh, passion for African fashion. I just like that lyric. If it was a rap song, it would make so much sense. Passion for African fashion, yo. <laughs> right. Um, well, first, before we talk about your event uh, that will be in Liverpool, That's right. um, just in one sentence or two, tell us what led you into to decide to choose fashion as a career? Um, you know, I... I didn't start off in, you know, in a career with uh, fashion. I have a background in economics and, you know, like every other person, um, you know, did the academic side of things. Or, uh, eventually, I found myself where I used to uh, sell apparels from all different countries and I used to design uh, a lot of um, different, you know, women clothing as well. And, um, you know, just as I you know, continued doing that, I started to wear African prints and I got a lot of compliments from people. So it was just um, a thought of, okay, why, you know, selling different apparels from different countries, I, I could bring that into my own culture as well and promote my, I just love, you know, my roots. I love originality and I like to promote Africa. So I started to promote Africa through fashion. All right. And what was your first uh, outfit that uh, you designed and what boosted you and motivated you to say uh, let me take this out to the market right because what i do is i look at the um let's say westernized designs and i then convert it into you know making them with african prints so um i had this um coat that I made, which is one of, more or less like a jacket, uh, which was made from African prints. Uh, and a lot of people loved it when I, when I wore it. So I, I'm thinking, yeah, instead of having to wear all these high street designs and, you know, I, I can actually make this from African fabrics. And, you know, that was how it went for me. And it's been absolutely amazing. Interesting, Ibi Yemi. Uh, talking of high street designs, that leads me to my next question. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, my question is, firstly, I love your outfit. Oh, thank you. It looks very, very, very lovely. Very unique. I'm sure the viewers at home will agree with me. But then let's talk of the high street, okay? Your wardrobe, I'm sure, I cannot come into your wardrobe to see what's there. But tell us your wardrobe. Is it filled with African outfits or it's filled with Max and Spencer DKNY Sherut, because I hear a lot of, including myself, Africans, we say, let's support African fashion. But then when you open somebody's wardrobe, he's got more Western clothes than African clothes. So what's your wardrobe like? Mostly African print. I would say 98% of what I wear is African print. So that, that's what I do mostly. Um, you would hardly find me. Well, in the past few years, I, I've been wearing prints, and um, I love it. And if you agree with me, African print is taking over now. Most people wear African prints now. A lot of Africans are beginning to believe in themselves more, be proud of who they are. All right, uh, before we talk about the event, we're here to talk about your event, but I'm so intrigued uh, with uh, your website when uh, we read your website with the production team yesterday. So many inspiring stuff. So, like, now, material, right? Um, I don't know how fashion is made. I just wear the clothes, mm -hmm. okay? So, like, um, where do you get your material from and how's the processing? Uh, the manufacturing uh, of these outfits? Uh, do you have to spend so much on operational costs? Uh, tell us more. Well, I, I get most of my fabrics from um, Nigeria, which is where I'm from. Um, we sometimes get it from here as well, but, you know, it does work out cheaper in terms of, uh, uh, you know, production and all that. It's made of in Nigeria as well. I do the designing, and I have people who are working, you know, back office for me and producing um, the clothing. So... Yeah, it it's works out a lot more, more cost-effective that way. So the fabrics have got, most of the fabrics are, are from Nigeria. All right, okay. Lastly, uh, what have you achieved so far in, the, in the selling your outfits? So is there uh, a story that we don't know? Share with us. <laughs> 
In terms of, um, you know, the African friends, I have, uh, well, business, uh, you know, initially when you, when you start, it's a normal process for you to go through the ups and downs. Uh, but, you know, gradually, with a lot of dedication and hard work, I believe... We want to learn from the downs. And what were the downs? You know, it's it's not easy sometimes, you know, some for, for, for a lot of people, like myself, I used to wear a lot of ice street designers before I switched as well. Trying to convince people, you know, sometimes that you can, in this environment where you have a lot of, you know, different background culture, to convince them you can actually come out and look good. A lot of people feel that you, you know, in the past, you can only wear your prints in the house or to church and stuff like that. So to, to go out to parties, dinner, top events in your African prints, it was a bit of um, a process to try and convince people. You need to wet yourself, see, let them see how beautiful it looks. And so it was a lot of, I used to, when I do my photo shoots, used to do like a lot of changing, you know, just to show people how beautiful it is. I never used any model. Most of the time I was wearing it myself so they would be able to see what it would look like on me and, you know, appreciate it. Fantastic. Well, we've got African Fashion Week, uh, which I think uh, uh, is growing tremendously. Uh, what do you think of African Fashion Week? Oh, I think it's, it's an absolutely amazing event, which um, brings together a lot of African designers as well, showcasing people uh, from different African backgrounds. And yeah, it, it's, it's an amazing event, fantastic. All right, brilliant. Well, let's look at the event. Uh, let's not forget the event. Uh, that uh, Tell us about this um, event. Uh, what is this event about the uh, passion for African fashion? Uh, what, what, what's this event that uh, you, you'll be hosting in Liverpool? Passion for African fashion, which is Fashion 2018, is to promote, highlight and educate um, Africa's creative industry. Um, it's an event that would showcase uh, the high-end established designers and emerging designers. Um, you know, give them an opportunity to showcase their creativity to a large global audience. So we're having highlights of the day. We're having, you know, it'd be a combination of a catwalk and a trade show where we also have people who have different businesses who are coming together to showcase the businesses on that day. We have um, the exhibition side of things before we then start the, uh, the wrong way show. Uh, we have live installation, African Afro air show as well. Um, live performances, so it's a day that's packed of full of a lot of interesting activity. All right, uh, quite a lot of people nowadays. When I talk to people, <laughs> everyone is talking about you need to open different streams of income. You need to do a lot of networking. So I'm sure people want to come to this event and do a bit of networking. networking. But they'll be more keen as well to know these businesses you've mentioned that are coming. What sort of businesses are coming? Would you mention any type of businesses or names? We have um, uh, designers uh, coming from outside of the UK. We have Vanels coming from Netherlands. Ruthie Clothing coming all the way from Abuja. Uh, we have um, all different businesses in, in the UK, you know, fashion, as long as it's, you know, within the African fashion and beauty industry, um, we are showcasing, we just want people to come and see the beauty of Africa. All right, and of course, uh, on your uh, flyer, you've also mentioned networking. Uh, that would be an opportunity to network. But I should be honest that uh, <laughs> I've attended quite a few of the African Caribbean events. There's one I attended uh, that uh, said it's uh, a very posh dinner and lunch, or it was a lunch and a very posh lunch on this networking. But then I got there, uh, African time, of course, it was starting at two in the afternoon and it ended up starting at four and the venue was only booked up to seven. So there wasn't any time for networking, <laughs> <laughs> right? So uh, tell us more about networking. What's, do you, have you set a time for networking? Because I think networking is a very imperative thing in today's world. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. We've put all that into consideration. The event starts at 12 p.m. noon. Uh, free admission as well. So this is a strategy to bring a lot of people in on that day. So red carpet networking, have people give people have the opportunity to network, speak to one another, get ideas, share, co-create, innovate. You know, on that day before we then start the main show. So we have about two, three hours where we're giving to a lot of people to come in, network you know, patronize the, the exhibitors before we then go to the main show of the day, which will be the runway show. All right, okay. Well, my challenge here as a presenter is to get people on set like you. What's been your challenge as well so far in the fashion industry? Well, 
in the fashion industry is, um, you know, as you must believe that you would know that fashion is um, continuously changing dynamics. How is it changing? Tell us more. You know, you, you're wearing this today, tomorrow is, is a new set of design coming out. So you need to keep up the standard. Up the you need game. to You need to up your game. That's the word. You need to up your game all the time. You need to know what's on. You need to know what's trending. You need to, you know, be, 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 you know, as things move, you need to move with it as well. So, yeah, it, it's, it, I can call it quite challenging because you're coming up with this design and before you know it, another design is coming up. People want to move when people want to wear things that are trending. So you need to obviously be in line with what's, what's happening out there. All right. Uh, well, still talking about the event uh, in Liverpool. Uh, what other attractions have we got? Uh, are there any musicians coming? Dancers? Any other attraction? Anybody that we know that's uh, uh, going to be in attendance? They don't have to be somebody that we know, but they might be somebody that has uh, something to showcase that uh, it should never be missed. Yeah, we do have. The host of the event is the popular... Um Fashion expert uh, Adebayo Jones, the king of Kuchor, he will also be showcasing his collection on the runway on that day. Um, we have uh, Kwame Korantang, we have the Van Nels coming from Netherlands. Uh, confirmed guest of honor on that day will be the Nigeria High Commissioner. Um, yeah, we have live performances. We have the global cultural icon, and you're the first will be present as well. And we have a lot of the uh, Central Association of Nigeria community community leaders will be attending as well. Well, live performances is something everyone likes, especially uh, at, you know, on a Saturday afternoon in summer like this. Uh, who's performing? We have Anya the first performing. We have um, um, Dami from London, Liverpool who will be singing as well. So we have dancers. Um, Anya the first will be doing the talking drum just to infuse a bit of um, African into, <laughs> into it as well. So yeah, we have a lot of um, that being planned for that day. All right, brilliant. Well, um, what is your best part of being a fashion designer? You know, the best part of me being a TV presenter, I think, is talking to lovely people like you. I think everyone loves their job for a particular reason. Why do you love fashion? I just love the. I just love creativity. I love, you know, it's not about dressing, you know, to go out there. It's about the uniqueness. I like to to be unique. I like to stand out in anything I wear. I always say to people, it's not about you know, making that dress to be, you know, making it beautiful is about the uniqueness. It's about the way you carry. It's about the way you, you step out there. You know, I can't be wearing the same thing with you, but it comes across differently to other people. So I like to, I like to be unique. I like to, you know, step out there and people would look like, yeah, you know, she's wearing African print, but she's wearing it differently. Uh, right. Okay. Still brilliant. We're still talking on uh, the event on... Uh what date is the event, actually? It's August the 18th, um, live in Liverpool, the, Ade the Britannia Adelphi Hotel, between 12 p.m. and 8 p.m. All right, brilliant. Brings me to my next question. Um, Africans, of course, and friends of um, Africa, what do you think it's going to take uh, for us to have African outfits on the high streets? And I'm sure they are on the high street, but I mean on the high street, in self fridges in various shops like people now like me instead of wearing suits for board meetings we're wearing african design if i'm working for a barclays bank and i went in my african shirt for a corporate meeting i'm sure mr abcd will say john mate john mate you can't call me that shirt go wear a suit but when is things going to, when do you think things will change where People appreciate that, no, this is a suit. This is an African suit. Well, it's not, it does start with individuals. You know, it depends on you believing in what you, you know, believing in yourself, appreciating your culture. Um, I don't see any reason why you would appear in your African suits and, um, you know, they would say to you that you're not allowed. It's, it's got to do with you. And a lot of people don't have that confidence yet to, to go out there and, you know, show people who they are, which is the reason why, you know, one of the vision for the show is we're, we're trying to encourage people, urge people to, to appreciate, appreciate themselves. Whatever vicinity you find yourself, be, be proud to showcase who you are. Proud to tell people that I'm African. I'm not ashamed to be African. Okay, and others have still said, because uh, I, love, I love these shirts, I'll be honest with you. I'm, 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 I've got loads of them. Uh, in my wardrobe. Well, not loads, but I've got a good number that I could change seven days a week, seven different ones. But then some of my friends or colleagues have said, well, they're too expensive, but then I still see them. 
going to spend 80 pounds on a uh, Armani shirt or t-shirt. What message do you have to those that say, we want to support this fashion, but they're just too expensive? I mean, if anything that's quality, obviously you, you should be willing to pay for it. If you're wearing enough, if you're wearing an Armani shirt, for instance, and you go out for an event, you, you could find about 10 other people wearing exactly the same. If I'm designing a shirt for you, 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 you know, there's that very tiny chance of you wearing exactly the same thing with anybody. So you're going there, looking different, standing out, so you should be able to pay for what, you know, having to go out there and look and stand out unique. So it's, it's not coming across extremely more expensive than the, than the high, street, high street designers. It's just that people don't believe they've got to pay for African prints as much as they pay for the high street designs. All right. Um, well, still, before I come back to you know, the other thing is we've seen um, an influx of now, uh, not just with African fashion. Uh, I met an English friend not long ago who is, is, a, is a DJ, is a top, like, UK DJ. And he said, well, you know what? Uh, the best thing that's happening now in music is Afrobeats. Uh, I'm trying to get into Afrobeats. And then I was reading not long ago that now fashion, they are westernized companies, designers in America who are now using the African fabric. What does that mean? What does that tell us as Africans? It tells, I mean, as Africa, I believe that is saying to us that, you know, still the same thing. Let's be proud of our roots. Let's be proud of who we are. You know, don't look down on yourself. Don't, don't think that, you know, you, you can't promote who you are in any, any environment you find yourself. You need to stand tall and, you know, be able to, you know, showcase where you're from. Um, Vanessa is coming to to showcase at the you know at the fashion show. She's she's not Nigerian. She's not African. So you know, but she does African prints. All right. I refer to the other same question that I asked. That you know, those that sell African print, uh, they say uh, selling African print is too uh, costly. Uh, do you think it's a ripoff? Absolutely not. Because if you're getting quality, I don't think it's a rip. If you don't think buying an Amandi shirt at, a, for an expensive, at an expensive price is a rip-off, I don't think, you know, you spending decent money on, on an African print shirt would be a rip-off because you will be getting, you know, you will be going out there looking good and standing out, be unique, because you're not going to, you know, there's, there's a very slim chance of you finding somebody who will be wearing exactly the same as you. So, you know, I don't want to believe, you know, it's, it's, it's too much to pay sometimes. You know sometimes. what I mentioned that? I was talking about um, uh, Stella McCartney, who, yeah. sells, who sells an African print, and, uh, you know, it's too costly. So, <laughs> you, I, mean, you, well, I mean, I still want to hear, do you, you think she's right? Do you think it's a rip-off? Do you think McCartney is... Uh, to be honest, for, what, for the designs and what she's um, put out there is, yeah. is outrageous. It's extremely... <laughs> <laughs> it's outrageous. It's, it's, uh, that is extremely... Ex Expensive. That was uh, close to two thousand pounds. It was, um, yeah. I would say, well, but for the class of people who will patronise her, we're looking from our side of things. You know, class of people that will buy those. It, it, it might come cheap to them. Mm. Well, of course, designers are designers. Brands are brands. But then this is not a debate. But then, what about those who are going to say, well, you can't sell the same price with Armani. Armani has been there for years. Armani is a big brand. You are only starting today or yesterday. Why should your prices be at 60 pounds for this lovely shirt or dress uh, whilst I'm getting the same Armani for 45 or 50 pounds and it's a bigger brand? Well, what do you have to say to you know, uh, people that come up with their personal opinions like that? Right. Um Branding is it's it's got to do with your it starts with yourself, the way you position your your you know, your products to people. So for people who believe that because some names are out there and they believe they should be charging more for exactly the same because your upcoming I think is, you know, I, I don't I think is unfair because everyone has, you know, put in a lot of work into what they do. Um they put in not only, you know, they put in effort, they put in money they put in a lot of passion into what they do so putting everything together you you know you come up with a price this is what i want to charge for what i've done and i feel this is what is worth and um you know people then try to talk you down i think no it's it's not acceptable it's something that you know it's your personal choice you know what you've put into what you're producing all right so still back to the show you've got the runway show as well at the event tell us more about the runway show 
Yes, yeah, so uh, for the runway part of things, we have different designers, not only clothes designers, we have uh, hair designers, we have accessory designers, hat designers as well, showcasing their collection on the runway. So it'd be all different uh, designers on, on the runway, not just clothing. All right, and uh, the actual show, what will be uh, being displayed? I mean, firstly, I'll ask you. I mean, you've got a lovely dress there, of course. Thank you. Uh, but then, uh, what about us men? Uh, do you do men's shirts? Yeah, we have men designers coming. I said Kwame Quarantine will be showcasing as well. No, but yourself, do you have? I have men's range as well, but I will be doing um, women's and kids on that day for my brand. Oh, kids, that's yeah. lovely as well. Yes, yeah, so we, we, yeah, we are trying to get the kids involved as well. So just to encourage a lot of our African children to, to believe in themselves as well. And um, a lot of them don't want to wear African clothes. So, you know, we're trying to get them involved as well. All right, so there's also this thing of uh, every weekend I'm out, especially now in the summer, having chicken wings and Guinness and debating about corruption in Africa and saying, hey, we Africans need to support each other, you know. But then African designers, you know, are they, do you think African designers support each other? I mean, in oh. your experience, uh, tell us your experience or your observation. Maybe you support other African designers. Uh, or maybe within your network you support each other. But then what do you think generally, they're just a general outlook, do you think African designers are doing much to support each other? Well, in my opinion, um, you know, having been in the African industry for a while doing fashion, I haven't had any personal uh, issues with where, you know, I go out there to support a lot of people. And, you know, since have this is the very first of this um, of this event in Liverpool. It's the maiden maiden version of it, and I have gotten a lot of support, to be honest, from the from the designers. So um, you know, going out as well to support people and meet with other designers who are coming on board to support. So it's been a lot of um, working together in in the African industry in terms of fashion. So yeah, I'm quite impressed with that, to be honest. All right, of course, uh, what can be done again in terms of Africans? I mean, of course, uh, you seem to be international, like you talk to everybody from your personality. But then what about those that stick to their own countries? What can be done for us to have? Because the only platform we have is uh, London Fashion Week, which puts all Africans or African Caribbeans, people interested in that, together. What more can be done in terms of putting um, African fashion designers together? Because there are those that are in Nigeria, those that are in Zambia, those that are in Malawi, Ghana that cannot make it to the UK, that cannot have their material showcased? What, could, what do you think can be done from your experience? Well, I think that um, in terms of uh, this show is set to obviously showcase all different, not just Nigerians, all different African countries as well. Uh, you know, when these kind of shows have been established, I don't see any reason why people can plan to take it to different countries as well, where you give upcoming designers, people who don't have the opportunity to, to travel abroad to, because I want to believe the African Fashion Week, um, London also have a Nigerian you know, version as well, where they do African, African fashion show in Nigeria. So, I mean, they, we can plan to do fashion shows, not particularly in the UK, travel to other different countries as well to establish things like this, where we encourage uh, the upcoming designers to also get involved and showcase their creativity. I'll tell you what, uh, uh, Ibiimi, when I came to the UK, uh, my uncle took me to Brixton. When I used to be JJC, Johnny, <laughs> you know, Johnny just come. Yeah, he took me to Brixton and he told me, this is London, this is Brixton, this is how close you can get to Africa, right? So there's a majority of Africans in London than Liverpool. Do you intend to bring this show ever to London? Tell us more. In the future, yes. Um, we have only started... Uh, Passion for African fashion in Liverpool because that is where I live. So, um, you know, let's bring together the African community. It doesn't mean that the show is only open to Africans. We want everyone and every, everybody to, to get involved. We also want to show every other person that, you know, we want the white people, everyone, the brown people, we want everyone to come in and see the beauty of Africa. So once we've done that in the vicinity where I live, then we can then take it to other cities in the UK as well just for people to appreciate, you know. All right, other people say, uh, well, I've lived in Manchester, but I'm not sure about that, uh, but it's people's opinions. They've said people that, uh, or Africans who live further than Birmingham can be a bit, 
you know, not skeptical, but then uh, because of the culture there, they become a bit more westernized, more British than us in London. How has it been like putting people together, advertising for the show in Liverpool, putting the Africans together? Um, I would say it, it hasn't come very, you know, easy for me because um, I live in Liverpool, but most of the time I am in London from one event or, sh you know, or show or the other. But, um, you know, through adverts like this, TV adverts, social media has helped a lot as well, um, where you, you know, a lot of people have been the ones contacting us to inquire about the event, the website, our social media handles. So it's, it's been a process, but uh, yeah, eventually we, we got there with people there as well. So yeah, a lot of people now are coming on board from Liverpool, where we initially started with people outside of Liverpool showing interest. And when, you know, they saw that a lot of people... Right, I'll just stop you uh, there. Uh, well, we'll just round up now. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on uh, the breakfast show. Wish you the best in this particular show. We'll flash on the details for the show in Liverpool. Otherwise, for me, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. It's been absolutely amazing being on this show. Thank you for the invite. I, I really appreciate it. And to all the viewers as well, I appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. God bless. Thank you. Well, uh, that was uh, Ibiemi uh, talking to us about our upcoming uh, fashion, uh, Passion for Fashion show in Liverpool. Details will be up on the screen. For now, I'll take a quick break, and when we come back, the breakfast show continues. Stay where you are.